What's going on guys, Torn and Bagel here, and welcome to my top 10 games of 2014. Now, this is the defining list. Uh, if this ga the game is not a list, it was not the greatest game in 2014. My list is right, the rest is wrong. No, I'm joking. This is my opinion. You guys can have your own, I know. Some of you, I'm just going to get it out there. FIFA 15 and Call of Duty is not on this list. Some of you may have those games because you don't want to real famous, but some of you may have these games. I'm going to let this. But I don't. So, with that said, let's get straight into it and let's start up. Top 10 games of 2014. Now, we'll move on. Number zero. Or just the face. I'm number zero. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put a lot of work into this video. I had a lot of research doing. Uh, this video took me all day to make. So I think this video took me... I started making the video about one. Yes, I probably made, it took me 10 hours to make this video. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys on the next video, which I will be Dragon Age Awakening Part 1. Or it will be the top 10 biggest disappointments of 2014. But thanks for watching, guys. Please leave your lists in the comments down below. And just remember, this, oh, by the way, this is going to be uh, at the front of the video as well. So you'll see me twice if you stay to the end. But, oh, well, uh, if you stay to the end, you'll see me again doing this. But, so, yeah, so remember to leave your lists in the comment down below, in the comments down below of, your, of the top 10 games of 2014 for you. This was my list. Doesn't mean I'm right. Even though my start would disagree with that, but oh well. But let's move on. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please tune in to the next. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Number 10 Watch Dogs. Holy God, this game was good. Watch Dogs, amazing. Published the creators Ubisoft. Great props and the makers of the Assassin's Creed series came out again and showed why they're so good at making these sorts of games, open world adventure. Because this game was an action adventure game, it had some cool mechanics, some cool open world aspects. The character though was kind of boring, but yeah, it was like a cool mechanics, like you control the city with his phone, like and everything. But the question is, if a smartphone can do that, what could a big computer do. Mm. But my problem with this game was the downgraded graphics coming from E3, their trailer was pfft. their graphics was holy god they were good. That was amazing graphics. I guess that was amazing graphics at E3 when they showed this game. To when it came out, the graphics were noticeably worse. We don't know if that was Ubisoft just showing us a lie or Sony and Microsoft making them put it down because their consoles couldn't run that. Nobody knows. But you've had the Sony fanboys and the Microsoft fanboys saying, it's not us, it's them, it's the other people, it's Ubisoft because we, our console is amazing, and we don't have, they, our console's got nothing wrong with it. Yeah, shut up. Just shut up. Yeah, so Watch Dogs was truly amazing. It would have been higher on the list, had the graphics and the, ca the characters not been boring, and the graphics weren't downgraded. It would have been higher on the list. Let's move on to the next one. Number nine. The Wolf Among Us. Whoa! This game. Ye God. It lived up to The Walking Dead Season 1. It. Alright, you, you, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. This game was not, it's not big. Trust me, it is not a big, big game. But it deserves every prop in the book. The publishers are from, uh, is Telltale. Telltale Games 
And holy god, they are good at making good storylines. They made 2012's Game of the Year, The Walking Dead. And god, that was good. I cried at that game. At the end. I'm not going to spoil it for you, just in case you have not played it, but I cried. So, yeah, amazing story coming from this game. Living up to The Walking Dead Season 1. But it didn't reach that standard. It was just below it. I was still satisfied with Telltale again. Coming out with such a great game. The graphics. The graphics were good. The graphics were amazing for, for an indie company of Telltale standards. That was good. Good graphics. Nice improvement. A nice improvement to the combat system. It was much more fluid than click, punch, click, punches. Instead of its fast pace combat system. Fast pace, fast pace combat. But it was like more interactive again. But I don't mind it being so interactive. Just add a bit more puzzles in, please. You're a point and click adventure. You're supposed to have puzzles in it as well. Not just interactive things and everything. You need to have your puzzles in it. But, yeah. Telltale. You're amazing. You're amazing. What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> yeah, so, you're amazing, Telltale. You are... That's another great game you've made. I am looking forward to their other games. Yeah. So... I'm, I wish I got a review out on this game. I just didn't because I didn't have my review channel up for this game. And I probably will go back to review it one day. But this game was good. And it was absolutely amazing. Let's move on to number eight. Number eight. Alien Isolation. Now, this game was the savior for the Alien series, Alien series. This saved that title. That movie title, it saved it. But the f this is definitely the game the fans wanted after the disappointing Aliens, Colonial Marine, Colonial Marines. That was a disappointing game, and we asked for a more stealthy horror game, and we got this. We got the stealthy horror game which we wanted, and I'm happy because we got what we wanted. And which what companies brought that? None other than Sega and Creative Assembly, two strategy companies, people make strategy games, come out and make such a great stealth and horror game that it rivals the greats of like Manhunt and uh, Resident Evil and all that. But I can't believe how good that this game was. I am shocked that two strategy companies could come out and make such a good game after the disappointment 2K did with Alien Colonial Marines. Maybe, maybe, maybe the backtracking's a bit annoying. Just get rid of that. The game's amazing. Could have been high on the list without the backtracking. But also, maybe a tip for another game in this Alien series. A mix over between most 75% Alien... Aliens Isolation, and 25% Alien Colonial Marines, with the stealth of Alien Isolation, but the guns going down of Alien Colonial Marines. AI, of course, from Alien Isolation. Because the I, AI in this game was amazing as well. The uh, Joes, the Helping Joes were hard to kill. The Alien itself was really hard to understand, it wouldn't make the usual AI movements. It would slither up the walls and everything. It would, it would move out, it would move, run away, and sneak back up on you and kill you. And it was annoying, but a good type of annoying. But this game could have been higher if the backtracking was gone and it had a bit of alien colonial warnings in it, just a bit, like the gunning down parts where you could shoot the alien and kill things more. 
Well, that's it. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven. Sh Middle Earth. Shadows of Mordor. Now, now. This game... When I heard about it before it came out, I never thought it would be in my top ten of the year. But God, it snuck in there at number seven. It was at number ten, but then I thought Watch Dogs, and moved up to number nine, and then Wolf Among Us just couldn't go any higher, so I moved to number eight, and Alien Isolation, moved up to number seven. Moved up to number seven. Shadows of Mordor. Who published it? Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. A movie company. The people who released Harry Potter, the movies. Harry Potter? Yeah, him, them, them guys. They, they released this game. But this game really shocked me. I thought when they made this game, they were going for more of an action, adventure, more Call of Duty sort of thing, no proper storyline involved. But they went for an action role-playing game. And heebie-jeebies, it worked. It worked. Now, if you don't already know, this game was set in the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Uh, universe and the events of this game happened in between the hobbit and the lord of the rings in between the those events but my complaint about this game is not the graphics it's not the story the story's a bit short on the short side but your character feels a bit too overpowered for the story like, Jesus, if you do it right, he's a bit too overpowered for the story. He needs to be nerfed. <laughs> he needs to be taken down a bit. Like, you need to feel like you can be killed, because I felt like I couldn't be killed. And I was only killed once, and that was at the start of the game. So yeah, he's a bit too overpowered for the story. But overall, this game was good, and it snuck in there for me. Now let's move on to number six. Number six. Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Oh, Gearbox. J -j Just Gearbox. Carry the plea. They, they've done it again. You know, I'm just going to take a seat. I don't care if you're going to see me. I'm going to take a seat. This game... Sam, I want to take a seat because I'll probably fall over thinking about this game. This game was it was hilarious. Borderlands has always been hilarious. It's always been a funny, funny series of games. Borderlands One, Borderlands Two, and Borderlands the pre sequel. It's amazing. It's amazing. But who brings these games? I've always said Gearbox makes them, but who publishes them? 2K Games. The people who made Alien Colonial Marines have already shit on already. Very good here. <laughs> but, yeah, I've got one point to make this game good. One point. You're a Borderlands fan, this is the only point you need. to buy. If you play Borderlands 1, 2, you like this character, this is the only point you need to go buy this game. All right, you ready for this? You are you re are you ready? I've mentioned this like in my updates in the gaming industry, but if you guys haven't watched that, but are you ready? Are you ready? Dun, dun, bow to your master. Are you ready? Are you ready? You can play as Claptrap. Done, done. There you go. Go buy it. All right, I, I can already I can already hear the the Borderlands pre sequels being ripped off the shelves and being bought. I can already hear it. I can already hear it. <laughs> now I'm joking. Now I can't hear it. But really, it was sick. It was amazing. My problem with this game... I'm standing back up now. My problem with this game... 
was the graphics. Still have not made an improvement since the first one. Make an improvement to the graphics. Yeah. Alright, gotta go. Let's go and move on. That's all I gotta say, but it could be not on the list if the graphics were improved. But let's move on to number five. Number five. GTA 5, the next gen edition. Yep, this game is up there. GTA 5 was already a good game. It was already a really good game. And it was one of the best of the year, this year. That's gotta tell you something about how good this year actually was, though. For a game that came out last year and it's just been re-released, is up there for me again. <laughs> Disappointing year, but oh look, this game it made some amazing new features into the game. Well, actually, some of you who played not play GTA Five, GTA Five, or GTA, who published it? It's Rockstar. Rockstar Games made the game. Rockstar um has the game. That's right, and it is an action adventure game. Just let you guys know that. But back into it, it's got some cool new. It had some cool new features going into it, like. Heists like, but like some sort, some new heists have been put into it. The graphics being updated is just polished. My problem with this game, though, I have a problem with every game. Don't worry, I put a problem with every game. My problem with this game is there's no real proper changes, which makes me feel the need to go out and buy this, buy a new console, and buy this game. I'd see no real reason. For people like me who collect consoles, I'm going to keep my old consoles. I've got I've got a PlayStation 3, an Xbox 360, and a PlayStation 4. I'm not going to see a need to go out and buy GTA 5 next gen edition when it's cheaper to buy GTA 5 the old gen edition for PS3 or Xbox 360. I don't see a point. But I did. I bought, I bought it, and I tried it. Well, actually, no, I didn't buy it. My, someone else bought it, lent it to me so I could play it. So I could get more games done and, you know, get more games to have a chance. But I didn't see a point. You didn't make real, no real changes. You gotta make real changes to make people want to buy it. That's my only problem with this game. So, that's done. Let's move on to number four. Yeah, move on to number four. Number four. Far Cry 4. I played this game, I had this game for two days, and it's up there. Two days and it's up there. Far Cry 4 was truly, is tr was truly a great game. Yeah, it's that good. Ubisoft is again up there, that's the second game with what they came in, number 10 and number 4. Amazing games. Two, but watch, it's Far Cry 4. It's a first-person shooter action adventure game, and it's an open-world game, so that's gonna get props from me. It's, it's gonna get props from me. It's open-world game. I love my open-world games, and it's it's leaning towards the RPG side as well with an amazing storyline. But here it comes here it comes. I bet, I bet you the Far Cry Four fans are going, <laughs> "Don't shit on my game." I'm going to just, I'm not going to watch this video now, you're shooting on my game. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I had two problems. I had to decide, I was trying to decide between, the sto the st is both two with the storyline. They were both good. One of them was the storyline dropping off in interest near the end, like a bit dropping off. And then, one, the one that, with the one that I picked, because I was a new player into the Far Cry series, so I, haven't, I got Far Cry 2, I just haven't played it yet, and I didn't get Far Cry 3. Yeah, because I got Far Cry 2 uh, last month and I haven't had a chance to play it. I have to quit. But, uh, so, yeah, Far Cry 4, my problem with it is, you need to, you need to find a way to help new players transition into the storyline. You need to let them help them know what's going on, because I feel like I was missing some stuff. Any new Far Cry players think they were missing some stuff in the storyline? Like, you didn't get what they were talking about, or who are you, or how do you know me, and who's this person, and how's my father so important, or anything like that. 
that's my problem. But Far Cry 4 was a totally good game, and it deserved its spot on the list. It could have been higher if it transitions there. And then drop off at the end of the end, because the drop off near the end probably still would have been. If it transitioned to the main storyline, I probably would have got number three, actually, ahead of this next game. But, oh well. Let's move on to number three. Number three. South Park. The Stick of Truth. <laughs> this game. This game, though. This game, though. Was hilarious. The funniest game I have ever, ever, ever played. More funnier than Borderlands. This game. Out of the park. This game was being push back, 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 push it back, push it back. Yes. Yeah, push it back, push it back. Just kept pushing it back. Finally got it out. What's gonna be like? But who published it? Yeah, we've already been on this list twice. It's Ubisoft again. Ten, four, and three now. I think any number two were wrong? I don't know. Well, I don't know what you guys don't get. Because, let's just skip all the way into the video. But, oh well. Ubisoft made, put this game out. And, seriously, it was a good role-playing game. It was a good RPG. Funny game. And it actually feels... Instead of feeling like you're playing a game, it actually feels like you're having a season-long marathon of South Park where you're the main character. That's how good it feels. With the writers of South Park writing the script to the game, it couldn't have gone wrong. But where was the game's mistake for me? Where was the mistake for me? And I can already hear it. No, no, don't hurt South Park. Make the game longer. You're an RPG, and the game's only, what, 15 hours? 15 hours for an RPG. And my Dragon Age LP with me rushing through it near to the end was 26 or 27 hours. Why is it when we go on, shouldn't it be the more modern games get? Like, the more, the more modern games should be longer than the old games, but it seems to me the older games are longer than the nowadays games. That's what I'm seeing. Halo, Call of Duty, South Park, compared to oh, Dragon Age 2, compared to the old games of Dragon Age Origins, such as that. Skyrim, yeah, oh, sorry, Skyrim's story on Switch, sure. Oblivion, uh, Mass Effect, 1 and 2, and 3's even quite long, but that's, that's modern, so that's one of the modern games which long Skyrim's alright. But, oh well. Yeah, so, <laughs> South Park Stick of Truth did really well. It's a good game. It could have been lower. My voice just cracked like a 14-year-old girl. Yeah. But, oh well. Yeah, so, yeah, it could have been lower on the list. It could have been behind Far Cry 4, but Far Cry 4 had the two problems that I tried to say. But, oh, it's still a good game. But, yeah, so it reached number three, but it was never going to beat the two above it. The two above it were just too good, in my opinion. But, I know I'm going to get a lot of complaints with these next two, because, eh, shut up. Oh well, let's move on to number two. Number two, The Last of Us Remastered. Yeah, The Last of Us Remastered. And if you know who that is, PlayStation fanboy, Xbox fanboys, you know what that game is? That game rings some stuff to my ear that does. This game rings Sony fan... Oh my god, stop cracking voice. Sony fanboy, PlayStation fanboys singing these praises, and the Xbox fanboys sing, saying how bad this game is because it's a PlayStation exclusive. Sit down, look, sit down, look at these story time. Story time. There once was an Xbox who wished it had this game. They're called Mike. There once, there once was a company who wished they had this game. It's called Microsoft. They made an Xbox, and they wished they had the last of us on it. So the Xbox fanboys said, oh, this game's not on our console, so it must be bad. But oh well, go play it. It's one of the best games ever. When we came, when this game came out, it was the best game on the generation, the new generation, and that's saying something how bad the generation was doing. The last was came out in uh, March, the March the start of the year, and it was the best game of the generation. The generation started around November, and it was like March, and it was still the best game. C can you? Can, is anyone seeing a fault in this generation again with Watch Dogs and all this? Is anyone seeing a fault? At the start of the generation. Can anyone see a fault in it so far? I have. But let's go into it. 
Who made The Last of Us? Sony? Well, who published it? Sony Computer Entertainment published it. So, yeah, Sony, PlayStation exclusive. Yep, yeah, Xbox fanboys. I can already hear them stop watching or shouting. Wow, this game on the list it was so bad. How do you know you haven't played it? If you're an Xbox fan, you're, if, you're not, if you're an Xbox fanboy, you don't have a PlayStation. You, you haven't played it. So, how do you know it's a bad game? You have not played it. God damn it. Shut up. So, yeah. What's good about this game? It's a solid story. A very good story. Very emotional story. Very attaching story. With Joel and Ellie. Amazing. Your zombie apocalypse game, yeah. Hmm. That, that, I'm trying to find a cure. Yeah, that's been overused so many times. But they put a spin on it. I made it actually more emotional than most games actually make it. And I think it did really well. But of course... I have a problem. Oh, it's an action adventure uh, survival horror game as well, guys. But of course, oh, and by the way, the, the Xbox fanboys, this game is one of the mo more wars than any other game. Done. All right. So, uh, what is my problem with this game? What was the problem with it? The AI. AI was stupid. You stupid. It was nine plus ten. AI would probably go twenty one. But yeah, it was stupid. I felt like the AI was lining up for my gunfire. <laughs> Bit of improvement, please. Bit of improvement. Could have got a 10 out of 10. Just didn't. Please work on it. But oh well. Let's move on to the big number one. Let's move on to it. Number one, guys. Number one. Dragon Age. Inquisition. Yes. Yeah, I gave this game number one. Yeah, fanboy. Yeah, I'm a fanboy. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I didn't give it Call of Duty. Yeah, so I'm an idiot. Um, I didn't give it FIFA either. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, no. This is my opinion. Have your own. Please. Um, got to tell you. Yeah, but let's move on. Dragon Age Inquisition. Produced by my favorite gaming company, Bioware. Bioware. Uh, Bioware made it. It was published. It's strange. Dragon Age, Mass Effect, and all that. It, the people who develop it is my favorite gaming company, Bioware. But the people who publish it is my least favorite gaming company in EA. Ugh. Carry the plea. But oh well. <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. What was so good about this? It was a good role playing game. Good RPG. Again. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Amazing storyline. Dragon Age was back on top, in top form for me. This game, from Origins, which was amazing, was my favorite game ever, which was my favorite game ever. Dragon Age 2. <laughs> so let's go through the marks. Dragon Age Origins, which was, was my favorite game ever, got a 9 out of 10. Dragon Age 2 was a myth. Got a 6 out of 10. Dragon Age Origins. Sorry, Dragon Age Inquisition, sorry. Bing. Bing. It didn't get a 10. No, no, no. No boy. No 10. It got a 9 out of 10. Again. But oh well. What was. The, yep, so it was back on the top form. But. Of course, the game has a downfall. Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> Carry the play. It was the graphics. It was the graphics. They were appalling. I know that this was their first attempt, really, a tr an attempt of an open world game where you, where you have your, those different open world maps. I know this was the first attempt of that, but come on. Better graphics, please. Your trailer shows amazing graphics, but your your your, your game is just. Uh, uh. Again, we get lied to with trailers and graphics, and I don't know. I'm confused, but oh well. Dragon Age Inquisition was the best game of the year, in my opinion. It's in line to win Game of the Year. So apparently, I'm not the only one that's false. Uh, th th think this so yeah 
Oh. Thanks, guys. And let's move on to the ending. Now, we'll move on. Number zero. Or just the face. I'm number zero. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put a lot of work into this video. I had a lot of research doing. Uh, this video took me all day to make. So I think this video took me... I started making the video about one. Yeah, it probably made, it took me ten hours to make this video. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys on the next video, which I will be Dragon Age Awakening Part 1. Or it will be the Top 10 Biggest Disappointments 2014. But thanks for watching, guys. Please leave your lists in the comments down below. And just remember, this... Oh, by the way, this is going to be... Uh, at the front of the video as well, so you'll see me twice if you stay to the end. But oh well, uh, if you stay to the end, you'll see me again doing this. But uh, if you, uh, so yeah, so remember to leave your lists in the comment down below, in the comments down below of your of the top ten games of 2014 for you. This was my list. Doesn't mean I'm right, even though my start would disagree with that. But oh well. But let's move on. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please tune in to the next. Thanks for watching, guys.